In this video, I'm gonna show you how I implemented a sleep action in this workflow engine that I'm working on. I'm going to outlay the requirements for the action. And if you want to, you can pause the video there and you can go try implement and design this yourself and then come back and see how I designed it. Let me know in the comment section below how you would solve this problem. Okay, so what are the requirements for this action? So this is going to be an action inside of a workflow engine that has lots of different actions. So one of the actions could be to send an email and then we want to sleep and then we want to send an SMS. So it's this sleep action here that we're focused on designing. And these are the requirements. There could be multiple instances of the engine running at any one time. So for example, this send email action could be executed on one instance of an engine and then we can execute the sleep action on a different instance. We must have a five second resolution, which means that if I configure this to wait for 10 seconds, after my email action has sent, I need this to be sent within 10 to 15 seconds. So it just means that we have an accuracy of five seconds. An instance of the engine can be shut down at any point. So let's say that we're sending an email, halfway through sending that email, we could kill this instance of the workflow engine and that's the same for sleep. And then finally, we need to have a configurable delay time. So this sleep here could be for five seconds, it could be for one month, it could be for one week, but the user needs to be able to configure that. Okay, so now would be a good time to pause the video and then you can come back and see how I designed this. So one possible solution for this would be to simply get this sleep and then put a row in a database to say when this action should be configured. And then we can query that on a cron and see if there is any actions that haven't been executed that fall within a given window. The issue with that is that we need a five second resolution, which means that our cron would need to run at least every five seconds. So it would work. And if I was just implementing something really fast, I would probably go with that approach first off. It's not the approach I went with, but it is a simple approach that would work. And then you could switch it out later for something that scales a little bit better, but it does actually meet all of these requirements. How I ended up solving this problem was by using an external source. So every time we get an action, so let's say we get a send email action, we can put this onto an external source and then we can have an instance of an engine pick that job up. And then we can do the same for sleep. And the external source that I chose for that was SQS, which is just a queue basically. So how this works is we have, let's say our send email action, make the font there a little bit smaller. And then we have our sleep. Now, when we get our sleep action, we're going to create an instance of the action. And we're going to store this instance of the action inside of our database. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to see how long until should execute. And if this time between when the action started that we can get from this instance of the action and when it should execute is less than zero, that means that we should execute this action. We would say less than zero. Sorry, it's less than or equal to, then we execute. If it's not, if it's greater than zero, then we can pop another message on the SQS queue. Now SQS lets you add a delay for this message coming back into your system. But the problem is, is that delay is a maximum of 15 minutes. So we can get the time between now and when it should execute. And if it's more than 15 minutes, then we'll put this message back on the queue for 15 minutes. Otherwise, let's say we have five minutes until it should execute. We should put it back on the queue and say this should execute in five minutes. Okay, so what happens if it's more than 15 minutes? Well, we're just going to repeat the process. So we're going to get our message back out of the queue. It's going to come up to this sleep action. Now we have an instance of the action. So we're going to read from that. We're going to figure out how long we should sleep again. If it's less than zero or equal to, we're going to execute. If it's more, 
then we're just simply going to go back around that loop again. So let's say that you had a sleep of one month. Every 15 minutes, that message would come back through the system and it would be checked until it gets to the point where it should be executed. So now we can jump into the code and I can show you how I actually implemented this. So this is the sort of core of this workflow engine. When a message comes in, so this is handle action. This is a message from SQS. We see what the action type is. And in my case, I've called my sleep action delay. And so we just have a switch case. And if it's a delay action, then we're going to create a new delay action. So let's jump into that and we can see what this is. This is basically just a class. Now we're going to find the instance of the running action. And we know that we have that because we log the action start before we actually run the action. And this log action start is going to see if we already have a log for this action. And if we do, we're just going to return and it requires the action to not be completed. So we could run this action again after the first instance of it has been completed. Okay, so we know that we have this running instance and now we're just going to find when this instance started. And then we're going to see what the delay seconds is. So this is just the configuration to say how long should this sleep last. Now we're going to find the seconds since the action started. And then we're going to compare that against the delay seconds. This is the seconds that it should sleep for. If it is greater than or equal to, then we can continue. We're going to handle the next action. And in this case, we just call this.next. And then we're going to log the action complete. And all this is going to do is it's going to set the completed at date. Okay, so if we haven't yet reached our timeout and should execute the next function, we need to calculate how many more seconds it should wait. So we just do that by getting our delay seconds. Again, this is the configured amount of time minus the seconds since it started. And then we can call this dot handle next action. And in this case, the next action is this current action. We're just going to pop this message back on our SQS queue. And here is the delay seconds. So this is the seconds to wait. And if we go have a look at handle next action, you can see here we take in our delay seconds and then we're just going to set that to the minimum value of delay seconds or 15 minutes because SQS only allows you to create a delay of maximum 15 minutes. If you wanna see how I solved other problems in this workflow engine, because there is a lot of different problems to solve and actually quite interesting, let me know in the comment section below what exactly you would like to see, or if you'd just like to see an overview of how I've implemented the workflow engine. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.